Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We just rest in you, God. We rest in your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. It is now time for our prayer request. If you have a request, go ahead and stand and make that request known. Amen. Sister Paulette. Amen. Amen. Gary. Amen. Sister John. Amen. Mm. Mm. Amen. 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 Sister Francis. Amen. Amen. Are there any other outspoken requests? I don't want to miss anyone. Pastor, Pastor, do you have any requests? No. Okay. Continue to remember Sister Reva. Everyone knows she's home, but I'll just continue to remember her and her healing. Um, also, Sister Connie Brown, who had the same surgery. She's home. Um, continue to re, um, just praying that God would um, heal quickly. Um, those need replacements, amen, and they can get back to doing, um, they're going about their normal activity, amen, amen. And I just also want to say, you know, as I, I look at, I don't look at the news, but I, I see snippets of the news sometimes, and there's just so much going on in our city, so many deaths, and the one that's really just been on my, my mind, those three young men, you know, um, I'm, just pray for their families, um, the, the one, you know, that mother, she just was so determined, you know, and, and they were able to find. But just continue to remember um, those families and, and uh, these children. There's a lot um, happening with our children, too. You know, let's continue to um, remember them. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. If there are any unspoken requests, go ahead and God sees, he knows. Amen. All right. After this prayer song, I'm going to take these requests before the Lord. Amen. I'm healed by the power of his word. Whoa! 
just come to you again saying, thank you, God. Thank you. We praise your name, God, for all that you have done, God. And now, God, we are bringing to you these requests, God. There have been many, many requests that have been made known, God. Um, continue to remember Jerry, God. I believe he said he's going to be starting a process um, this coming week, God. We ask, we know that you are already there. He's just going to meet you there, God, and you're going to meet that need, God. You're going to bring him through, God, and we're thanking you in advance for that, God. Continue to remember his friend, God, who has COVID, I believe I heard, for the fourth time, God. Touch her body, God. We know that you can bring her through, God. Continue to be with little Kurt, God. Touch him in his body. Um, he has COVID for the second time, God. Bless him. Touch him even right now. Sister Cheryl's sister-in-law, you know all about that situation with those blood clots, God. Continue to remember Sister Johnson, God. We thank you that she is here, God. She was sick, God, but you have delivered her from that, and she is here with us, God. Continue to remember um, the Willis family, God. We are claiming complete healing for Jarrell. Sister Frances Lewis had a request. There were two different requests, God. Continue to touch in those areas as well, God. Continue to remember Sister Reva. She is home recovering, God. Sister Connie Brown, and she is home recovering, God. Continue to remember our city, God. There's so much going on, God. So much going on, God. We, I just ask that you would just send your angels of protection down, God, to just could, uh, wrap your angels around everybody, God, as they go out and as they come in, God. Be with those families who have lost loved ones, God. Be with those police officers, God, who had a part in that um, death of that young man, God. Touch them, Father. Um, I, it wasn't right what happened, God, but I'm just asking that you would just move and work through them. Be with all of the families, God, all of the families who are involved, God, whether they're uh, on the side of the wrong on the, or on the side of the right, God. We just ask that you would just have your way, God. Be with all those who lifted hands, God, but did not voice and a prayer request, God, but you know each and every situation, and we know, God, that you are able, that you are able to work and make all situations right, God. We just, again, say thank you, God. We love you, God, and we just praise your name, God, and we just ask all these things in your son Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Mm -mm. It is now time for us to have our communion, Pastor. Wait a minute, hold on, Pastor. Amen. God is so good. Amen. How many of y'all glad to be here today? The Bible said that before you go through this portion of service, 
You need to examine yourself. Not by other people. This is one time you need to take inventory on yourself and see, basically, whether or not you need to be a part that is of this service. We thank God that is for his body, and I thank God for his blood. We thank God for the body of Christ. We thank God for blood, because all of our sins are under what? They're under the blood, and we thank God for that, believe it or not. Let's pray for our elements. God, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. As we hear him from the cross saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what we do. And long afterwards, God, the confession is we have done things and not known what we have done. We ask God, as we bless these elements, that we be blessed in return as we partake in this service in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Bible says on the same night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and break it, said, take and eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. In the same matter, he took the cup and went to your sub saying. This is the New Testament in my blood. As much as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Isn't the Lord good? Hadn't he been good to you? Look at where he brought black people from. And this is Black History Month. We had nothing. Some of us came here on a mule. And now we have been blessed in every kind of a way. We thank God for Jesus. Look at somebody and say, may the good Lord bless you. Amen. It is now time for Pastor to come. Amen. Amen. I know I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I can't wait to see, to hear, rather, <laughs> the word that God has given to Pastor for us. Amen. I ask that you would just sit, as always, do just sit and say a little prayer. <clears throat> Excuse me for a pastor before he comes. But before he comes, I'm going to sing just a little bit of a song. Amen. Amen, amen. And at some point during this song, I'm going to ask some help from the audience. Amen? Amen. All right, so y'all get ready. Y'all get ready. I tell you why I ceased from falling, why I turned away from sin, twas because the love Follow him. 
talking about. Can you say he washed me? He washed me. Lord have mercy. God is a good God. Yes he is. Amen. Thank you for everything. And we thank we thank God for being so good to us and how he blessed us. Amen. Amen. We appreciate it that God is letting us see another February. And I appreciate that myself. I thank God for not only waking up, but the mission that you have. Folks, I'm, I'm just glad to wake up this morning. No, you need to do more and wake up. God didn't save you just to go to heaven. He, he wants you to do some work. Yes, he does. Would anybody agree with me with that? Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with being woke up. Thank God for that. 
but I believe he purposed me. And God didn't purpose me to be up and down. I'm up today and I'm down tomorrow. I'm a Christian today, but I'm not tomorrow. I'm coming today, but not tomorrow. God has purposed you. Amen. I like that book years ago they wrote that said purpose driven. We thank God for that. Thank God for Jesus this morning and all of the services. Wasn't the worship good? Give God a hand clap of praise. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to talk from the book of Jeremiah, third chapter. Amen. And I want to read that 22nd verse. Now, it doesn't say this in all translations. This word is not used. It said, return ye backslidden children, and I will heal your backslids, your backsliding. Behold, we come unto you, for thou art the Lord God. Thou art the Lord God. Lord God, you may be seated. You may be seated. I want to talk just as long as the Lord will let me on the subject of a man. My subject is a word we don't hear anymore. And that word is what? Backslide. You don't hear that a whole lot. No, you don't. A word we don't. Now, this word is used with the morning church more so than uh, today. And the morning church was called the early church. Amen. Y'all remember Pentecost and how people was on one accord? Amen. You don't hear a lot of preaching and teaching on backsliding these days. Am I right? Oh, y'all act like y'all ain't with me this morning. You don't hear a lot of that. Now, when it's used today, amen, it's used for someone who has an addiction, basically. They'll say that they... This person, he went back to the old Eliba. That's what they would say. Amen. The old addiction. And then they're talking about backsliding, going back. They're drinking again. They're smoking weed again. Amen. They are uh, compulsively lying again. They're on drugs. They're gambling again. Amen. And, and somehow this word seems to be outdated. But here in the text, Jeremiah uses the term backslide. So then backsliding, would you agree with me, is in the Bible. Is it in the Bible? Anybody? It is in the Bible. But you don't hear this word a whole lot that is anymore. Help me, somebody. You see, Jeremiah is using it, which means that this word means to turn away. Amen. Now, Jeremiah uses the word more uh, uh, than any other major or minor prophet, yea, even in the New Testament and all of the Pauline doctrine. He uses this word. In Jeremiah, in this chapter uh, uh, 3, he uses the word more so, amen, in any other chapter of the Bible. Now, back to this word, amen, you see. Back to this word, uh, uh, to its, uh, how can I say it? It's being... Uh, you see, uh, archaic, that's what it's being, believe it or not, you understand? Which means that you would say something is outdated, 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 really. Uh, when, when the people come over here to work on the church, uh, the different um, uh, people that come, the electricity, they say a lot of stuff is, out, is outdated, believe it or not, you understand? Now, now, many say that. It's just a fire and brimstone word that old preachers used to use when they would shake your finger. But this word can impact you in many, many ways. We need to take notice of this word. We need to ask some questions about it. Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Now, you may refuse to use the word, but can I put a bug in your ear? People are still backsliding. Don't fool yourself now. They're still backsliding. Amen. You see, now, now here in the book of, of Jeremiah, this is a spiritual problem addressed in chapter 3. And he was speaking to the people of God who was turning away from God. And it's a, a deep, how can I say it, serious turning away. To tell you the truth, it's kind of like now. You know what people are telling me, preachers are telling me, ain't nobody hardly coming to church. We ain't getting no, 
no money, and guess what? We're going to have to close churches down. It's a turning away. You can say what you want. You understand? I'm around preachers all the time. You're not. You're not. But it's a turning away. Amen. You see, and what I want us to do is take God's glasses off, put them on our eyes, and look through his glasses, you understand, and see this from a Christian perspective. That's what I want to do. That is today. Now, there has to be some signs and symptoms, amen, of you drifting away from God. There has to be. There has to be. Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, when you slowly drift away from God, something is happening that you know about. Am I right? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see? How many of y'all know? It's like a boat, a ship without an anchor. You slowly drift back into your old self. You really, really do. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see? And just as a car, I got a car. You understand? And on my car, there's a light that will tell you and let you know that you need to service your car before it gets worse. Before it gets worse. You better do something. You understand? And guess what? You can't do anything about anybody else. But guess what you can do a whole lot about? Yourself. You better get yourself in order whereby you won't end up in a backslidden state. It's the same way of being a Christian. We need to look at our life. How I many of y'all know what I'm talking about? If you're paying attention to, uh, uh, to these things and the signs that in your life, you can tell whether or not you're slowly drifting away from God, and you need to do something before your life gets worse. <laughs> you need to do something. You, need, you can play with it if you want to. You understand? But brother, so and so, he's the one. that God is saying, you better look at yourself. You understand? There's a scripture that says, and I'm going to make this plain. He says, if you draw nigh to God, James 4 and 8, he will draw nigh to you. Y'all ever read that before? You ever read that? But can I break it down for y'all? I want to break it down for you. It works like this. A man meets a woman. The man likes the woman. The woman likes the man, believe it or not. He makes a statement. He said that this girl, both uh, uh, her and I, we're getting closer and closer. Amen. Now, he does not mean we're getting closer in our proximity. You do know what proximity is, don't you? You understand. But our relationship is getting deeper. Am I right, Sister Lori? Our relationship is in a place whereby we're happy, we're glad. You know, we're glad that we met one another. But James is using the language of proximity to reveal something about a relational awareness. You got to understand. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? OK, here's another example. I, I've been to places whereby. Um, uh, a person shouted something at me, and I can't hear good anyhow, from the wall. You understand? And what I said to them, I can't hear. I can't hear. You understand? I can't hear over the crowd. I can't hear over the thunder and lightning. I can't hear over the noise. I can't hear over the background and the TV. Let me get a little closer. Does this make any sense, y'all? You got to get closer to God. You can't stay in the same state, sitting around, talking about, I got so many irons in the fire, I can't do this, I can't do that, I got so many, I can't do this. You need to get closer to God. I can't hear over the noise. When you draw near to God, you would be able to hear him. When you draw closer to God, you'll be able to see him. Ooh. Have you seen God lately? Have you heard from him lately? Oh, Lord, have mercy. So if you draw nigh, not only can you hear, but you can see. I've seen God work. Have you? I've seen when I'm wrong and God show me areas in my life whereby I see where I can do better. What about you? 
what, 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 what about you? You think he gave you that scripture just to be giving it to you? Lord, have mercy. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? You see, we need improvement, you understand. James said, whosoever and whatsoever you let come between you and God, you will be on a downward spiral. He said, don't let the world, the world get between you and God. Why? The world is going to turn you against God. It always does. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, the world is going to turn you against God. Guess what my Bible says? Whoever is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Ooh. Some people love everything the world got. Everything they got. That's what they love. Whoever is a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. Stop turning away. Stop doing what? Regressing. You understand? That back was motion. Well, what do I do? What do I do? I, I, I got to do something. Amen. When I feel so far from God, when I don't read my word anymore, when you're struggling with sin and you don't even come to church, and when, when you have lost any kind of interest in doing anything spiritual, you understand, and you feel distant and disconnected from the God of your salvation, what do you do? You're in a backslidden position. You really, really are. How many of y'all read your Bible? You don't have to lie in the church. You read your Bible? Everybody hand, I got very few hands up. I'm talking about a Bible reader now. You look in the Word every day. That's what keeps me going. You understand? You see, because I have learned, as I said, I can't change everybody. Ooh, but me and God can do something about me. He can do something about me now. If you're looking to change everybody and stand up and have the last word and that's it, oh, no. I ain't going to change nobody. You better be, you better help yourself. Because if you don't, you are in trouble, and people who help can't help themselves. They can't help anybody else. I'm going to stay home from church. Well, okay. Well, while you're at home, you can't help nobody, and can't nobody help you. You may see a need at church whereby you need help. But anyhow, uh, that's not a part of my scripture, my, my text that I'm using, so let me go on. Amen. Amen. You see, we, we carry things on our lips and say, well, the Lord, Woke me up this morning. You understand God is good all the time. You wear little buttons that says praise the Lord and all of that. And some people got all kinds of different color rings they wear to say that, you know, I'm the chosen one. You understand. You see, uh, but a lot of them are living in a backslidden position. From the preacher that preach and those who sitting in the pew, pew they're living a backslidden position. Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, you see, well, 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 don't we uh, use words uh, 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 that will help us out in Scripture, but you don't use the word backsliding anymore. Now, in verse 22, uh, excuse me, but um, here Jeremiah tells the people to do what? Return from your backslidden state. That's what he said. He says, return from your backslidden state. Amen. And the children of God respond indeed, amen, to do that, they have to come back. Now, the peoples respond to this call to be healed. And if you're backslidden, you do need to be healed. And God said that I will do what? I will heal your backsliding uh, position, your backsliding condition. In order to do what to heal, you must recognize that you are in need and you must recognize who God really is. Amen. We've heard people say uh, how can, uh, there are people in their environment. Amen. And we know people that are in our environment that has brought desolation upon themselves. Have you ever done that before? I have. Believe it or not, I really, really have. You understand. And when you bring desolation upon yourself, many of them have lost out. You understand? They lost out. You see, I love Bill Cosby, but he lost out. He did. He did. Believe it or not. I love some of the other folk who wasted their life. You understand, they lost out. They lost everything they had. They lost their family. 
They lost their dignity, their ministry. Amen. They lost their good name. They lost six or seven figure job. They were incarcerated. And you may say, well, I didn't lose none of that. Amen. But there's a season, and in a season of backsliding, you lost your fellowship with God. And when you lose your fellowship with God, guess what? You're in a backslidden position. Amen. You're in a backslidden, believe it or not, condition. First John, it says that if we say we have, uh, if we say we uh, 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 have uh, 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 no sin, you understand, uh, how can I say it? If we say we have, excuse me, fellowship with God, we lie, and we do not practice the truth. In the season of backsliding, amen, fellowship, and true fellowship with God is lost, or it's greatly diminished by your action, amen. But it's going to take what? The work of the Holy Spirit and the power of God for people to admit that they're in a backslidden uh, position. David says that I hide, uh, he said, if I hide iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't. Hear me. There we, there we go again. You got to get close enough to him so he can hear you. Amen. Another writer say, oh, taste and see. You got to see him. See, see this thing, a backslide, amen, somebody needs to talk about it. Amen. We need to see and hear the working and moving of God. Amen. How can you know, amen, uh, how can, excuse me, how can you know Jesus and make Jesus known if you are in a backsliding position, the Bible said the blind cannot lead the blind. Both of them are going to fall in a ditch. In a ditch, excuse me. Your identity in Christ will allow you to live an abundant life because in Him we live and move and we have our being. Your identity is tied to Jesus Christ. It's not tied to Snoop Doggy. And you go and fish it. And you playing God. You being a pro ball player. Your identity has to be. I know mine is. I love the song that says, my hope is built on nothing less. But Jesus' blood and his righteousness. What about you? I dare not trust. I'm not going to trust CNN. I dare not trust the sweetest friend. But I'm going to wholly lean on who? On Jesus' name. Does this make any sense? If so, say amen. Lord, have mercy. Your identity, amen, is tied. You're born again, and you're born of an incorruptible seed, and don't let the devil, amen, and sin change that. Now, in the 15th chapter, that is of the book of Luke. There's a story that's told. Matter of fact, there's three stories that's told. Of a lost sheep, a lost corn, but there's a lost human being. Am I right? A lost son. And you've heard this before. You understand? Now, while all the attention is given to the son, amen, uh, uh, the uh, wayward son, uh, the essence of the story is about the father, the father. Because after all the son did, and he probably never asked it, after all the son did to himself and everybody else, the father was willing to do what? Continue his love and receive him. And then not only that, he celebrated his return. He celebrated. He celebrated his return. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? Uh, uh, now, David Curtis took all his money, my money, and did this and that and the other. Oh, I'd be glad to see him. I don't know that I'm not going to celebrate his return. But anyhow, this is good news, isn't it? Isn't this good news? You understand? And it's that the father wants to be what? Part of the return. That's what he wants to do. He wants to do what? Have a part. You understand? For your daughter, or your son that's wayward, he wants to kill the fatted calf. He wants to go get a band and all of that. How I many of y'all know what I'm talking about? He wants to drop leaves all on the floor simply because he wants to be a part of the return of a backsliding, backslidden, that is, per person. So he's not going to eat with the son. He's not going to visit the son in sin. He's not going to eat with him in the pig pen, but he'll welcome him back from the pig pen. Does that make sense? Because that's what he does. 
And that's what he did. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? When I was young, my, and uh, I was young, I used to go out with my cousins and them and go places to little clubs and this and that and the other. And my mama would never, ever go to sleep. She would keep the light on. It was a light that is, was from her room hallway, and she would open the door. You understand? And when we would come in, she would holler at us. You understand? Now, God is doing the same thing. He's keeping the light on because he don't want us living in darkness, y'all. He don't want us living in darkness. Amen. God is waiting for you to return. Return from sin in the pig pen. Amen. You understand. How many of y'all know what I'm going to stand? You see, the young man ignored his father when he went to a far country with his money. Amen. He was a long way from home. But there's some people that are ignoring God. And guess what? They even go through religious activity and come to church every Sunday. But they're still ignoring isn't that amazing? You don't have to be in a far country to be backslidden. You can be sitting up in the church. And still a product that is of a backslider. You understand? Why don't you join the party? Why don't you join your party? Amen. Anybody want to come back to God this morning? Anybody? You see, you see. The enemy has placed words in your mind to allow you to stay in a backslidden position. You understand? Words like, hey, 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 everybody ain't perfect. I keep telling you, it's not about everybody out there and the stupidity you see. You better work on you. You better do something about you. If you slowly drifting and you know you drifting, you better do something about you. You see, the enemy has placed words, that is, in your mind for some reason. Amen. You see, how I many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Here, 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 here's another one. He's keeping you, that is, from the kingdom, you understand. You see, he, he, here, here's, here's a good one. Um, uh, um, what, what did they say? Uh, I'm going to rededicate my life. Well, it sounds like you can do anything you want to do anytime you want to do. You're big enough to do it. I have never used that. I don't even see that in the Bible. I went to Bible college four years and graduated. Major theology, and nobody never told me that I could rededicate my... Rededicate? You can do it yourself. Oh, the president going to be a president. He going to swear himself in. I'm going to hold up my... I'm going to put my hand on the Bible. Uh, do you... Uh, 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 David Lundu, you, you can't do that. You can't do it, y'all. We're sorry. You need to stop believing all this stuff you hear. Read your Bible. Well, I think I'm going to rededicate myself. When are you going to do it? Well, when I get 33. And you 19? That stuff is very dangerous, y'all. How many of y'all know? Here's another one. God knows my heart. He know my heart. He know I'm right. I got a scripture for you. It's simple. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not your head. Lean not to your own words and understanding. In all of your ways, when you crank up your car in the morning, acknowledge him. And he will be the one that do what? Direct. Your path. It's just as easy as that. You understand. You see, your heart needs to return to God. Think about it. Think about it. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. You see, if I came to your closet today and say, well, I want you to give some things to the goodwill. Now, you might throw some things in the box, but you're not going to throw everything away that's in your closet. You're going to keep some things, aren't you? I'm not going to throw God in a box, not me. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep God. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, you get a little suit, and then you're going to throw everything else away. I bought me a new suit. It's brand new. I'm going to throw everything in the trash. You don't do that. You better. You see, this is the side of the dying. 
You don't want to die in the back city. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't want to die in a back bidden place. Because the wages of sin is what? Death. You understand? Your paycheck at the top is going to say death. You're going to come before the Lord and say, Lord, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. He's going to say, there's no paycheck over here from heaven. You need to go over to hell and get your paycheck. That's your wages. That's your wages. So we need to be very careful about what we do and about what we say. God is so good. We thank God this morning. Please, at this time, if you are in a backslidden state, or if you feel yourself drifting, just drifting away, please come and make it right with God. How many of y'all? There's one thing God tires of. As my hermeneutic preacher told me, he tires of your non-repentance. Your non-repentance. Your non-repentance. You understand? I don't even deal with some people because you're going to have to even repent over being around. Your non-repentance. You better be careful about that now. Can't go through life. Can't go through life. You understand? See. Can't go through life. Not just repenting. Somebody say, oh, we're repenting for other people, not all the time. Repenting for what you're doing wrong. Stand on your feet and come and say, you know what? Whatever he said made tr- makes sense. I'll never get close to God and never hear him with all this worldly noise around me. You'll never. You ain't going to make it. I'll never see him. You understand? I'll never be able to see him. You see, I've met people in a restaurant and say, you know what? I think I think I went to school with that, with that young lady, with that young man that looks like them. But you got to get a little closer to them. Well, you can do what? See them. Um, you ain't fooling nobody but yourself. And that little group you hanging out with, and they've been fooled a long time ago. So stand on your feet. If you'd like to come, please come to the altar and pray about this word that nobody uses anymore. You don't even hear it. Anybody? You want to pray about your stance with the Lord? You don't even have to say, I've already passed the lun, drifted away. But you can say, thank you, because I see signs of my drifting. Signs of my drifting. Anybody? Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Thank you. Anybody want to do what the songwriter says? Surrender your life. Not rededicate. I, I don't use stuff like that. that that's not. That, that's, that's not biblical. That's not biblical. Don't do that. Don't do yourself. But you, res- you re- surrender everything. You turn over the deed and towel to your life and say, Lord, Lord, I can't live alone and live for myself anymore. But I want to do what? I want to give myself to you. With all the sickness and foolishness and killing that we see, all of the hatred and hate groups we see in America, if I was everybody here, I would want to be saved. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer then. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for words like backsliding. Thank you for a whole chapter where this word is used in it. It's used more in one chapter than it is all over the Bible. But people still don't believe. They still don't teach, preach, and they don't talk about it. Because they're so, they can't hear you. They can't see you. The Lord, help us to see. Help us to hear. And then help our unbelief. We thank you, Lord. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, thank you, God. Amen. And amen.